Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video, I'm gonna go over what to do if you are failing a course in nursing school. This happens to the best of us. There are some nursing classes out there that we just don't get. For instance, I just did not get pathophysiology. I ended up doing good in the class because there was extra credit offered at the end, but I just, that stuff just did not click with me. So I am going to give you some tips on what to do if you're failing and share with you some of my experiences, just to let you know it is normal, especially starting out whenever you're first in the first semester of nursing school, you're just getting used to your nursing classes because nursing classes and non-nursing classes are a lot different, especially the exams and what questions they ask you and things like that. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to recognize that you might be failing or this class is going to be tough for you early on. You really don't want to figure out, oh, there's only three weeks left in the semester and it looks like I'm going to fail. You want to make sure that you recognize this early. And usually a good indicator if this test or if this class is going to be tough on you is usually that grade that you get on the first exam. What I would do if I scored anything less than like an 85 or maybe an 80, I would know, hey, this class is probably going to be a little bit tough and I'm going to have to really buckle down and pay attention to this course. So. If that happened to me, which it did many times, I would start increasing my study time specifically on that class. Because usually since I've had my first exam in that class, I've had exams in other classes, and the classes that I did good on, I would sort of put them in on the backside and really shift my focus to the, cl the class that I'm struggling in. And um, I would start assessing and looking at things that maybe I need to start cutting out time where I can really invest that into studying. So I would look at my work hours because I worked a little bit throughout nursing school and I would say, okay, I probably need to decrease my hours of working or um, get someone to switch some shifts with me so I can dedicate more time to this class. And I would look at my leisure time. I'm like, okay, well, I, I can have time for leisure time when I actually become a nurse. Let's see what I can cut out. And I would spend some weekends instead of relaxing or hanging out with friends or my husband, I would um, spend that studying instead of um, doing leisure activity. So see where you can shift your focus because chances are maybe for that first exam or maybe why you're failing is because you can't really give that class that much time as you should study. And so maybe that could help. Next, um, invest in a study guide. At first, whenever I started college, I was like, I'm not buying any more textbooks other than what I need for class because these textbooks are expensive. Well, when I got to nursing school, I noticed that people who were actually doing good in class, I noticed that they would have these extra books. And I would ask them, what are those? And they're study guides. Well, I, whenever I was doing bad in, um, I think it was Fundamentals of Nursing, that was another class I had trouble with, I invested in a study guide and amazing. Study guides, I really recommend, say you're taking pathophysiology, anything like that, you can get on like Amazon.com. And um, you can type in study guide for patho, study guide for nursing fundamentals, anything like that. And it'll bring up a whole bunch of study guides. What I went with um, was a book by Mary Ann Hogan. Um, and it was a fundamentals guide. And what I liked about it was that it broke down the material exactly what I would be expected to see on the exam. Like, you know, whenever you're studying for these classes and the notes and stuff, there's a lot of, of material that I call fluff, stuff that you really don't need to remember. And there's usually key concepts that will keep popping out things that you have to remember. And what a study guide does is it breaks down those key concepts. It's a nice outline and you can just review it, memorize it, digest it, and chances are you'll see it on an exam again. So I really recommend you invest in a study guide if you're gonna have trouble with the class. And also another good brand are the Made Incredibly Easy brand. It, it's like Made Incredibly Easy Pathophysiology, stuff like that. It reminds me of the, um, the Made for Dummy books. Okay, next, um, you could find a study partner. Ideally, this wants to be someone who is doing better than you in the class. You don't want to get someone who's doing just as bad as you because you guys get together and be like the blind leading the blind. You guys aren't going to get anywhere. So ideally, you want to get someone who did better on the test to help you. And how you can usually do that is 
offer an incentive to them. Say, you know, if you come over and help me, I'll buy your dinner or I'll give you this much money or something like that just to help let them know, you know, your time is valuable, but I really need your help. So look into that or maybe you have a good friend that can help you because usually studying with someone, I would do that and we could quiz and we could talk back and forth and they could help me understand what material was important, what they thought was important. And then another great thing I've noticed is exchanging notes because whenever we're taking notes in class, some people write things down differently. So say you're not a great note taker, your study partner might be and you could um, copy their notes and that could help you study on top of your notes. So always look into that. Next, assess how well you learn best. Some people are visual learners, meaning that they need to see diagrams, they need to see how it works, and others are auditory learners. They need to listen to it over and over. So really look to see how you are. Believe it or not, I am more of like a auditorial learner. So whenever I did my pathophysiology class, I he he recorded my professor recorded his lectures and we could go and burn copies of it at the computer lab and um, I would listen to his lectures over and over and over and it really helped me. So ask your professor if you are an auditorial learner if you can record them. And uh, next look into tutoring services. A lot of nursing programs have learning resource centers where they um, have students who volunteer their time who've passed the course to teach the course to teach tutor classes for free. So look and see if your program offers that. And I know a lot of programs or the school itself will offer tutoring programs where you'd have to pay like a little bit of fee. But hey, if you want to become a nurse, you want to pass this class and this is what's in your way, I would look into doing everything you can to get through this course because they are are those courses that are just so hard and you do everything you can just to get past it and um, if you can't do that a cheap way you could do it is form a study group yourself get some people who are also having trouble and who people who are doing good and try to get everyone together and form a study group and of course offer incentives say there's gonna be free food what college student doesn't like free food so try to do that and last but not least, um, you could always speak with your professors. There are many, many nice nursing professors out there that are really easy to be approached. And um, you could always ask them, hey, is there going to be a curve at the end of this? I've had some nursing professors where everyone in the class just wasn't doing good and they curved the grade. So ask if that's going to happen. Um, ask if there's going to be extra credit. You never know. Um, even in nursing classes, I had extra credit opportunities. Um, ask their advice. Say, hey, I'm not doing well in your class. What advice can you give me? And a lot of teachers, they can point you in different directions. They may even be able to get you with a tutor or something like that to help you out. And um, also point you in a direction of good resources like study guides. So that is what to do. Some quick tips on if you're failing a course, remember it happens to all of us. It doesn't mean that you're gonna be a bad nurse. It doesn't mean that you're not meant to be a nurse. Nursing school's hard. We all face it. And chances, if you're not doing good in the course, other people probably aren't either. So don't fret. Pick yourself up, buckle down, and get through it. So thank you so much for watching. And be sure to check out my other videos on nursing school, teaching tutorials, and things like that. And please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.